broccoli. Today's news is about broccoli. Broccoli. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Today we'll learn from Dr. William Lee, a renowned physician, researcher, and the author of the best-selling book Eat to Be Disease. Dr. Lee is celebrated for his groundbreaking research on how specific foods can influence our health, particularly in the fight against cancer. His work emphasizes the incredible power of our diet in supporting overall well-being and cellular health. In this video, Dr. Lee will investigate the remarkable benefits of broccoli a cruciferous vegetable that's not only delicious but also packed with nutrients. He'll explain how broccoli contains powerful compounds that help combat cancer and enhance our overall health. As a special bonus, we have included some anti-cancer recipes featuring broccoli. Let's now listen to the doctor tell us about the benefits of broccoli. As a special bonus, we have included some anti-cancer recipes featuring broccoli. Fresh broccoli. Next food we're going to talk about is brassica. Brassica uh, is a type of uh, vegetable. It's a class group of vegetables and claim contains broccoli, uh, cauliflower, bok choy. Uh, it's a green vegetable that uh, you can saute, uh, common in many different types of cultures. Uh, you find it in Mediterranean, you find it in Asia. And what's actually in these brassica vegetables? are sulforaphanes. These are another natural chemical. And these sulforaphanes, what do they do? They boost the immune system, right? Good, strong immune system, knocks out uh, microscopic cancers, uh, also lowers inflammation. Inflammation is like the gasoline on a fire, making the cancer grow hotter and faster. When you actually uh, calm inflammation, you're putting out the fire. All right. Uh, and actually, that is uh, very helpful when you want to fight cancer. The other thing uh, that uh, uh, the, the brassica does, it actually contains the sulforaphanes that actually are anti-angiogenic. They starve the cancer by cutting off the blood supply. And this has also been shown um, with uh, uh, broccoli, for example. So broccoli, cancer fighting. Broccoli! Here's the doctor to tell us about broccoli's anti-inflammatory benefits. It's broccoli. Broccoli. I want to focus in on broccoli for a second because broccoli is kind of like a triple whammy, a triple threat of benefit when you actually talk about anti-inflammation. So here's what broccoli has. It's got a bioactive that's called isothiocyanate, ITC. All right. And this is powerfully anti-inflammatory. Broccoli is also a good source of vitamin C, as I mentioned earlier. That's number two, that's the second benefit. And broccoli's got dietary fiber. Good for the gut microbiome, which then lowers inflammation. Isothiocyanate, vitamin C, dietary fiber, a triple whammy that's good for you. All right. Now, I'm going to give you some pro tips when it actually comes to eating broccoli. Uh, most of us grew up eating broccoli and uh, getting used to the fact that you eat the florets. Those are the treetops, right? The little green treetops at the, at the top. And of course, florets do have ITC, florets do have vitamin C, and florets do have dietary fiber. So florets are good, all right? Um, that's, a, that's what you normally see uh, uh, in a restaurant. But if you went to the farmer's market, all right, and you took a look at what broccoli really looks like, Broccoli's got treetops, the florets, but it's got a really long stem, all right? Make sure that uh, if you are buying whole broccoli, get the stem too, because the stem has twice as much of the isothiocyanates, twice as much of the bioactive that lowers inflammation, and the stem is also really, really packed with dietary fiber as well. So I would definitely use the entire broccoli. Now, to cook uh, pieces of broccoli, you can slice up the stem into medallions and actually cook with those, stir fry with them, uh, 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 saute them. The best way that I like to cook broccoli, get a pot of boiling water, like a pasta pot, get water boiling and, and clean your broccoli and cut it up and prepare it. And literally just throw the broccoli in the boiling water, blanch it for one minute, maybe even less. You will see the natural green color of your fresh broccoli suddenly get greener and greener and brighter and brighter. And you want to fish it out of the water before it gets super bright. You leave it in there, it'll get brighter and then it'll get duller because now all of a sudden, pretty much you've cooked out all those bioactives. You know, that's the stuff that your grade school cafeteria serve. Don't go there, 
Blanchet. That's like 60 seconds in boiling water or water that was boiling. You turn it off, you put it in there, then fish them out. And now you can cool them off if you want with some water. Now you can cook with them. And now it's the perfect thing to saute. You can cook it really quickly, right? Otherwise, you'd have to cook the broccoli for a lot longer. But if you want to saute uh, quickly or if you want to actually wok sear or something, that's the quick way is to blanch the broccoli first, right? That's a typical thing that I do. If you're going to uh, cook it in a wok, for example, a little bit of uh, oil, a little bit of garlic uh, or, uh, sh- or shallots, all right, um, stir fry it. You can put a little bit of rice wine in there. Don't worry, the alcohol cooks right off. And then add a little soy sauce, low sodium soy sauce, please. And then if you want, you could actually put some oyster sauce on there after basically everything's done. And we're talking about like less than two minutes, you'll be finished. Put some oyster sauce in there, stir it around a little bit and serve it. What an amazing umami flavor. And you get all the benefits of the broccoli, including the stems. If you actually are stir frying with the stems, you're getting the vitamin C, you're getting the isothiocyanates, you're getting the dietary fiber, you're getting all these components that can lower inflammation if you have arthritis. So that's a tasty way to actually lower inflammation. Okay. Now, if you're going like, all right, I'm not going to go to all that trouble. Uh, what can I do with the stems? Look, you can actually make a soup out of broccoli stem. All right. Put it in a blender, uh, add some vegetable stock, oregano, uh, and you've got a broccoli stem, oregano soup. I got a great recipe in the book that I wrote called Eat to Beat Disease. And by the way, it only takes 20 minutes from start to finish. All right. That's pretty good. And you can make a batch of it so you can have it over uh, for lunch the next day. All right. Now, here's a pro pro tip. If you want to get all those isothiocytes, but you want to get like the really superhero punch of it, like the really potent amount, Use broccoli sprouts. These are the three or four day old tiny little sprouts of baby broccoli, and they are packed with isothiocyanates. In fact, baby broccoli sprouts have 100 times the isothiocyanates that adult broccoli does. All right. So you really get a lot of potent. You get, you get a little potency with broccoli sprouts. You can use them to make a broccoli sprout shake, or you can sprinkle them on a salad or vir- virtually any dish. Um, that you're making, you can take make use of broccoli sprouts. So you can find them in farmer's markets. You can usually find them near the herb section of a grocery store. They're not very expensive. They don't taste a lot like broccoli. They're mild, they're slightly nutty flavored, um, uh, and they're delicious. So I recommend that. Um, broccoli sprouts, you know, some people talk about um, living foods, right? Those are the young sprouting foods that have all the nutrients and the energy when they're just young babies. And later on, when they get older, they get distributed the energy on, on the whole bigger plant. Well, it turns out that broccoli sprouts have been studied to see if they can boost the immune system. And in my book, I talk about a research study where they gave young people in their 20s the flu shot. Actually, it's not a shot. They gave a flu in- inhaler to protecting against the flu and it turns out that if they gave them also a couple of shots of a of broccoli sprouts made into a smoothie that's it a couple of shots of this a day that you would actually improve the response like 20 times to the benefit protecting you against the flu boost your immune system and when they even swabbed their noses afterwards you know where the flu might, virus might live they were like almost all gone broccoli <laughs> And now the doctor will tell us about broccoli's benefits for our immune system. Who wants broccoli? The next vegetable I want to talk about is a whole group of greens. Greens that are known as brassica. Now, brassica you might have heard of. Uh, That's because a bunch of healthy greens belong to them. Broccoli, broccoli rob, kale, cauliflower, cabbage, collard greens, mustard greens. Now, these brassica vegetables contain bioactives called ITCs. This stands for isothiocyanates, isothiocyanates, ITCs. And these are the bioactives that are responsible for the characteristic flavor of brassica vegetables. A little sulfurous, a little sharp, slightly bitter taste. Bitter usually means better when it comes to your health, right? And that's what brassica vegetables do. So what do ITCs, isothiocyanates, do in the body? Well, they are potent anti-inflammatory bioactives, and they also help to improve your circulation. They improve angiogenesis, that's your body's health defenses, and they can actually improve your immune system as well. And if you want to get the most 
of these ITCs from brassica plants, here's a couple of things you want to do. You can cook them quickly. Don't overcook them or you'll degrade the ITCs. And when you eat them, and you want to make sure they're tasty, right? You can only eat so much raw broccoli, which most people don't do. But if you blanch it quickly, saute it, then it actually becomes something really delicious. And here's what you want to do when you eat them. You want to make sure you chew them. And the reason that you want to chew your vegetables is that the ITCs, the good stuff, is locked inside the cell of the plant, right? Plants have cells, just like humans have cells. But human cells are soft and squishy. Plant cells are rigid and box-like. It's like a it's like a, like a shoebox, all right? And you want to break that shoebox open in order to be able to release the ITCs and other enzymes. So when you chew your broccoli, what you're doing is you're breaking open the shoebox containing the ITCs and you're releasing also an enzyme called myrosinase. And this enzyme, myrosinase, breaks down the ITCs and generates sulforaphanes. And the sulforaphanes then go on to, when you swallow them, go on to uh, stimulate your health defenses. Broccoli, celebrated for its cancer-fighting properties, is a powerhouse ingredient to include in your diet. Here are a variety of recipes that highlight this nutritious vegetable while maximizing its health benefits. And don't forget your steamed broccoli. Start with a broccoli and quinoa salad where cooked quinoa is mixed with steamed broccoli florets, cherry tomatoes, diced red onion, and a handful of fresh parsley. Dress it with a zesty lemon vinaigrette to enhance the flavors while providing vitamin C, which supports immune function. <gasps> broccoli! Another excellent option is a broccoli and garlic stir-fry. Saute chopped broccoli in olive oil with minced garlic and a splash of soy sauce or tamari. Add in some sliced bell peppers and snap peas for added color and nutrients. This quick dish is not only packed with antioxidants but also benefits from garlic's anti-cancer properties, making it a flavorful and healthful meal. Broccoli microgreen seed. For a comforting choice, consider a creamy broccoli soup, Blend steamed broccoli with low-sodium vegetable broth, a splash of almond milk, and sautéed onions for a smooth and creamy texture. Season with nutmeg and black pepper for an extra kick. This soup is rich in vitamins and fiber while providing a warm, nourishing option that promotes overall health. Does anyone want a broccoli smoothie? Lastly, try a broccoli and chickpea curry. Cook broccoli with chickpeas, diced tomatoes, and coconut milk, adding spices like turmeric, cumin, and coriander for a fragrant and hearty dish. The combination of plant-based protein and the anti-inflammatory properties of turmeric makes this curry not only satisfying but also a great choice for combating cancer. Next, watch the Dr. William Lee Club playlist for more information on the anti-cancer diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.